Jihad, is this you? Yes, it is. Now, Jihad, 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 Jihad I, have to, I have to ask about your name. Is your name really Jihad? <laughs> is, is your name really Jihad? It is really Jihad. That, that, is, that is the name that would be on your birth certificate. <laughs> Are you scared? No, 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 no. Not scared ask at all. What's his last name? Uh, Harb. Now, what's your, what's last your last name? Hard. No, you know, we, we don't have to give last names here. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'm more, I'm more than uh, more than happy to share my last name. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's good to have you, know. you call. I, I actually asked Jihad to call because, like Hussein, Jihad and his brother were former Muslims who have left Islam and now are worshiping Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So Hussein is listening from uh, via Skype, who's listening to us from Skype. Hussein, Jihad is also a former Muslim who found Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, not only him, but his younger brother. Now, Jihad, can you uh, real quickly tell us what happened? How did you come to know Jesus? How, what made you embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because we have a few minutes, so we want you to just tell us in a few minutes, summarize your testimony, and maybe in the future, Lord willing, we'll have you call in and give you a little more time. Absolutely. I don't have too much time myself, as I was explaining to you uh, earlier, Brother Sam, that I am at work, but I was... Uh taken by this opportunity, so I'm going to do, first of all, amen to Brother uh, Hussein. Uh, it's an awesome story, man. You know, and uh, God bless you and God be with you. Um, from my end, I was raised in a uh, Muslim house. My uh, my father had married a, uh, a Catholic. Uh, however, I was always taught the Muslim ways, you know, try to pray and, you know, uh, repent from your sins, so on and so forth. And uh, I had a, I had quite the struggle to throw my life. I mean, I was always in a bothered mind. Um, you know, one thing led to another into my uh, later years. You know, in, in my early 20s, I started partying hard. I started going out. You know, uh, unfortunately, drugs came involved. You know, um, recreational, of course. Um, but I can't deny the truth. And uh, that it, what was really happening to me, I always felt lost. I was always going to something you know, as a Muslim, you know, and every time, you know, even when I set foot into the mosque, you know, I just, I didn't feel right. You know, I can't, I couldn't explain it. I just, you know, the people were nice and so on and so forth. You know, um, it, it wasn't really the point. It was for me and, and my perspective of things. I didn't feel that it was my place, you know, and not to mention like many other Muslims that were born in Canada, uh, you can't really understand the words of Arabic, therefore you have to go and ask somebody for it, right? Where, you know, you get their own personal explanation um, and XXX. So, really, it, it, what you're explaining to me is absolutely beautiful, you know? So, one day throughout, it, uh, in the last five to seven years of my life, I'll just stop right there on that side of things. Uh, I'd always been through ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And I'm talking, when I go up, it's almost like moderate. You know, and when I went down, man, guys, I was low, like really low. And uh, I've stopped, you know, my party scene now for over five to seven years, I believe it is. And, um, you know, I had to go see doctors, so on and so forth, antidepressants, this and this and that. You know, and one day I was so low, um, and this is about a month and a half to two months ago, I called my kid brother. My brother's 25, God bless him. He was just one of those guys that was always strong, always under his own will, you know, and um, always spoke the truth, you know. So I called him up, and I said, Zach, like, you know what, man, I can't, I can't do this anymore, man. You know, and those were my exact words to him. I said, I just, I'm at the point right now where it's like I would never harm myself, you know, uh, ever, because I am a believer in God. Um, you know, but it was to the point where it's like you don't want to do anything anymore. You don't want to live anymore. You don't want to go and experience fun with your friends. You know, I would just lock myself in a room. You know, and he just stopped me in my tracks, and he goes, look, Janet, he goes, you've been to doctors. You've spent hundreds of dollars on supplements, uh, hundreds of dollars on prescriptions. You're always trying to look for the way. And he goes, to this day, you have never been helped. Never. He goes, you can't help yourself. I can't help you. Dad can't help you. You know, and it, I was kind of like, well, what's this guy getting at? You know, and to my astonishment, me thinking that he is still of Muslim faith, he turns to me and, because, you know, he never talked about God to me before, like ever, you know, as a Muslim, and neither did me and him, really. You know, we always had our little snickery jokes, this and this and that, but he turns to me and he goes, are you trying to tell me right now that the guy who created every cell in your body doesn't understand? And I was just kind of taken by his words, you know, and I was kind of like, well, yeah, of course, you know what I mean? And he goes, look, he goes, I don't care what you do, I don't care if you want to get off the phone, you want to bow down, 
you want to go pray in the shower. He goes, do whatever you want. Just, I want you to submit yourself to God. You know, he goes, it's over, man. You know, and admit to him that you cannot no longer do this without him and that you need him. You know, so I said, okay. And he said, one more thing. I want you to ask him to guide you to the truth and to the right way. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go flip open a book after this, you know, and learn a little bit more about Islam and so on and so forth. I got off the phone and I said it and I screamed the prayer. I was on my bed in my underwear, you know, <laughs> and um, I would say within moments, I couldn't explain it. I felt like there was a metaphorical cushion behind my back, you know, and I just started crying. I just started crying, you know, and it wasn't like tears of, you know, it was just tears of relief almost, you know. Keep in mind, I'm still a Muslim. So right away, that's it. Whip open the uh, the English version of the Quran, so on and so forth. Start reading Surah Al-Baqarah. All I heard was, was to the non-believers and uh, doomed to this person and doomed to these guys for not believing. And I'm like, man, like, like what's going on? You know what I mean? This guy doesn't sound like he loves everything and everyone. You know, so meanwhile, I'm still, you know, a little bit, very pro-Muslim. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to discover this kind of stuff, you know. So I flip open the computer. I'm going to go look up some debates because I'm going to prove my Islam that it's right. Meanwhile, guys, I've never really read the Quran, okay. And to this day, I have to let you know I confess the name of Christ on January 13th. Amen. And um, have been proud, thank you, um, ever since, you know. Uh, so I, I don't know too, too much about the scriptures of Bible, but what I can say was is how I feel. And um, so right after that, you know, I, I whip open, I was telling uh, Brother Sam earlier, thanks for taking the time to talk to me on the phone, um, was that I looked up this debate with uh, with Brother Sam and Shabir Ali. <laughs> Shabir Ali, my first public debate, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that was it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm going I'm going back and forth. I was like, yeah, they're making pretty good points, but I'm like, I think Shabir's like kind of on to something here with the three buckets of water. You Come know, on. And <laughs> you think I lost that debate? That's it. Absolutely not, line. brother. No, I watched. Ahead. I watched it again after I talked to my brother. So I called my brother Zach and I said, "You know what? Like it's kind of here and there, you know." But he goes, "Now I want you to go back, okay? And I want you to go back to this, and I want you to watch it again and notice how Shabir never really answers him directly. He gives his own personal opinion." So I was like, "Okay." I go back. I watch it. I was like, "Holy smokes!" You know. He's, he isn't. He's giving him, himself his own quotes and so on and so forth. You know, so I um, I called my brother up again. And I was like, can you f please explain to me the triune God? He goes, look, we believe in one God and only one God. Okay? And um, so we, God has come to you in three different forms. You have the Father, you have the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? He goes, there is no such thing as three different gods in the Bible. Amen. There is no such a thing. And I was like, man, that really makes sense because every time I turned to a Muslim, I was like, and even as myself, I was like, how can there be three buckets? How can there be? I was ready to say three buckets of water, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, um, I, I used to say that, but I'm thinking to Shabir, I was like, you really think of God that we're talking about God as three buckets of water? As smart as you are as a human being, you know, and, and so on and so forth, guys. I'm a plumber, okay. Not to take anything away from anybody else, but I understood that. That is so easy to understand. It's not even funny. So all these times in my in my past, I was like, "No, nah, I can't. I can't listen to Christianity because they believe in three different gods. Can't do it, man. You know what I mean? I don't believe in that. You know. And uh, that's kind of when the truth arose, and I started stumbling across your guys' show, Jesus or Muhammad. So I want to go to the root source, which is Muhammad. You know. And man, man, I cannot explain it. My socks blew off when I started watching your guys' show, and I'm like, man. And to all the Muslims that are listening, please, please understand that these gentlemen here are not here to hurt you. They're here to tell you the truth. Listen to me. They're here to tell you the truth. They're quoting things out of your book, out of my old book, the one that I thought that I loved and believed in. You know, but I was always filled with this anger, you know, and anger comes from your beliefs, what you're guided by, you know, and from the passages that I've read, uh, which is which is little in comparison to the, how big the Bible really is, is love. I am falling in love with God. Amen. Amen. I am falling in love with way. God, guys. I don't know what to say. Amen. You know? And, uh, and you can't 
theoretically take that away from me. You know, and there's been a little blurbs now mentioned to my family. They they seem to know where I'm coming from now. And, of course, you get in the unacceptance. I, I don't remember the last time a, a Christian uh, disowned his son. I'm not saying that that's what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Um, you know, but there is definite talk of, you know, we can't have this and we can't do that and so on and so forth. And you turn around and ask them, guys, have you ever even read the Bible? No. Are you, I said, are you scared? They're like, no. I was like, well, read it. If you're so sure about your word, what's the point of not reading? Why don't you go and learn? You know, and the the thing is, there's nothing to take away from anybody on my side uh, of the religion. It's just that you guys are blinded, you know, and I was blinded. Nobody ever tells you what is actually behind the scenes. They want you to be peaceful. Yes, they do. Muslims really want you to be peaceful. But what what the brothers on this show are trying to tell everybody is that that's not the actual source. The actual source is not peace, you know, and there's evidence. There's evidence to prove it, and these these guys here are presenting it to you, you know, whether you're choosing to take it or not, you know, I would open your eyes, you know, and like you guys would open mine, you know, and of course, and I thank God, and I never used to say these things, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for putting the knowledge and power into these gentlemen that I'm watching on my TV screen right now. Amen and, and amen uh, for you. Jihad, my prayer you, is that you, for sir. you and Hussein, the Lord Jesus in his infinite love, and His infinite power by His all-sovereign, almighty Spirit, the eternal Spirit of the Father, and of His blessed Son, the Lord Jesus, preserves you, your brother, Hussein, as well as every one of us here, and all true believers the world over, preserves us in His perfect love and power by His Spirit forever and ever, never to fall out of love with Jesus, never to turn away from Jesus, but fall more deeply and madly in love with Him, and to live for Him more faithfully, and obey Him more perfectly. The Lord Jesus keep all of you safe, but if it's his will, his will for you to suffer for his name, then he's worthy. And I pray he'll bring all your loved ones to saving faith in Jesus Christ. 